Hi, thanks for tuning in today. You're about to see a worship service that I hope will be a blessing to you. If you would like to help support the ministries of the Visalia Methodist Church, you can click on the comment link below and that will take you to a, a giving tab. We hope that the worship service you're about to see and the sermon you're about to hear will be a blessing to you. God bless and thanks. Good morning. Happy Mother's Day to you where it is appropriate. I hope that you are celebrating your mom and if you are a mom, I hope you are celebrating your motherhood today. We're glad that you're here and we hope that you will have a good experience with us this morning. We guarantee that the Holy Spirit is here and will do its thing if you will open your heart. If this is your first time visiting, either online, or hello out in Facebook land, or in person, please help us get to know you by texting the word VISIT to 559-657-6848 and filling out the digital connection card. If this is not your first time, please text the word HERE to 559-657-6848 or leave a comment on Facebook. Now is a good time to make sure your phones are silenced, apparently. Okay, as far as I can tell, mine is. For those who watch our replays on YouTube, don't forget to subscribe and click the bell and turn on notifications uh, so you'll never miss a new posting. Or should we? Yeah, great. Okay. Uh, children of all ages are always welcome in worship. Kiddos ages 3 through 6th grade who would like to attend Sunday school during the sermon time can meet Miss Jackie near the main doors at... Uh, after the first praise song this morning, for those with children four and under, our nursery is open and available for your convenience. Ask an usher if you need directions. Children's activities and child care are available between services for those adults participating in Bible studies or in the drop-in grace group. Grace groups connect you with people who genuinely care about what is happening in your life while growing in your faith and relationship with Christ. Drop-in grace group is your chance to try it out without commitment or to get refreshed if you missed your regular group. It meets in F-16 after the service today. If you came prepared to give this morning, thank you for your support and partnership. We have several convenient options. There are drop boxes near the exits on the welcome desk as well as the traditional offering plates. For those who prefer electronic giving, the iPads are located on either side of the main exit doors uh, or visit our website. Click the giving tab and follow the prompts. Life has gotten massively complex, hasn't it? You can contact us any way of 40 different... Uh, okay. Let's see. The flowers on the altar this morning are provided by Bonnie Fishback, and they honor her parents, Stan and Virginia Miller's 82nd wedding anniversary. That's beautiful. Thank you, Bonnie. And don't forget that the best way to tell someone you care about them is to invite them to join us in worship this week week and now drop in the bucket let's see here is that right so you know i'm i'm a professional at the other part of it doing the sermons i got to get this in order here no we're supposed to pray now so let's pray now will you bow your heads father as we gather this morning all of us are mindful of our origin here in the flesh we remember our mothers and we thank you that they carried us uh, until the day of our birth and that they cared for us along with other folks in our life. We give thanks for the love that they gave to us, for the sacrifice they made for us, and for the connection that we always feel with them. We ask that you would bless all of the active mummies with little ones who are tired and worn out and wondering what happened to the life they planned. Father, bless them with peace and the knowledge that pouring themselves into the lives of others is a beautiful and sacred task. For those mothers that have passed away who we remember now in a different way, we give thanks to you for what we have learned from them and for the love they gave us. We're thankful also for the church and the way that it mothers all of us in and throughout our lives, being always a place of peace and presence and strength for us when we have need and a place to grow. We ask that you would bless each one of us that our witness might be shown through our living as well as through our words to our family and to our neighbors and to those that we're privileged to work with until other people are attracted to follow Christ in the same way. It's in his beautiful name that we pray. Amen. Okay, today is Drop in the Bucket Sunday. So you see the little silver buckets on the tables around the sanctuary. I think you do, yes? Okay, great. Uh, let me read to you what we did with our Drop in the Bucket money this last month. 
Uh, we partnered with Tulare County Health and Human Services, Visalia Adult Integrated Clinic to help three individuals and their families. In this case, uh, we're really happy to, to participate with that particular organization because one of the necessary things in life is that if somebody really takes a tumble and gets lost when they are trying to, to find their way back and to, to stabilize and normalize, they need lots of different types of help and care, and it's a privilege that we get to be a part of that. So first, there was a, a woman who has uh, come a long way in her treatment and in her recovery from addictions, and she started a job, which is a huge thing in her life, given the, the road that she'd been walking, and she'd moved into a place of her own. Let me say that a different way. She moved into a place where she is finally safe. And she needed some help with just basic uh, household supplies. And truly, it was our privilege to, to provide those for her. There is also a currently unemployed uh, gentleman who needed to get cleaned up a little bit. He needed a haircut and some clothes and those kind of things because he had an upcoming job interview. And uh, we were able to help with that also. And we pray that um, he will receive not just what we gave to him, but he'll receive the spirit in which it was given. And after being in and out of the hospital with lots of medical issues, a man needed help to purchase clothing before he could return home. And again, uh, our great privilege was to be able to be connected and to make that happen for him. As you can see by th these examples, the situations and the needs that we meet through Drop in the Bucket vary, but our expression of Christ's love is the same, graceful giving without judgment. We choose to make a big difference in the lives of others as a way of honoring Christ for making such a big difference in ours. So whatever loose change you have today, if you drop it in the, in the bucket, we promise you that we will put it to the best use that we possibly can. It's a really important thing. You may or may not know that uh, drop in the bucket is going away the number one program in the church. More people participate in it and participate it, uh, in it enthusiastically than anything else we do. And what that tells me as the pastor is we have a really beautiful church. A nice soul exists in the church and people are looking for a way to make a big difference in uh, others' lives. So thank you for your continued support of it and I know you'll support today. Let me find out where I am now. Okay. Let's see, I'm read scripture. If you miss Kelly, raise your hand. <laughs> I should, you would think I would have memorized this order by now, but I'm always up on the stage looking through the sermon to see if I can fix that thing before it's time to go. Okay, the scripture uh, I think you'll recognize immediately is uh, uh, picked for Mother's Day, um, and it is from the Gospel of Matthew, the 23rd chapter. This is called The Lament of Jesus, and it is Jesus before he enters the holy city for the Passion, looking out uh, over uh, Israel, and he's recorded as having said this, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who kill the prophets and stone those that are sent to you. How often I have longed to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, and you were not willing. Look, your house is left to you desolate, for I tell you, you, you will not see me again until you say, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. May the Lord add blessing to the reading of Scripture. Last announcement for this morning, a very exciting one. If you've long thought, you know what the world needs is to hear me sing or to see me up front in the spotlight, today's your lucky day if you're a gentleman. Because at the end of the service, after the last song, we're going to invite all the men up and, and we will, I, I feel like, probably render the most beautiful version of As the Deer that has ever happened here. So, right, gather your courage, ladies, if, if you're with them, give them a little elbow shot and, and make them come up at the end of the service. We'll sing that as a, as a tribute to uh, Mother's Day. If you like the song, that'll be our gift. If, if you don't, it'll be our gift when we stop. Either way, men, get, get yourself ready. With that said, if you'll rise, take a deep breath, get yourself in the spirit of worship, and let's praise our God. Good morning, everyone. How are you all doing today? Good. Well, praise the Lord. God is good. God is good. Well, before we begin, I just want to read a few scriptures. Um, the first one is in Matthew eleven twenty-eight through 29. That says, then Jesus said, come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you. And this is my favorite part, because I am gentle and humble at heart, and you will find rest for your souls. 
And in Joel 2, it says, don't be afraid, O land. Be glad now and rejoice, for the Lord has done great things. Rejoice, you people of Jerusalem. Rejoice in the Lord your God, for the rain he sends demonstrates his faithfulness. Once more, the autumn rains will come, as well as the rains of spring. And this morning, we're going to start off with our favorite song, Rain Down.
Amen. Thank you, Alejandra. Please be seated. Jesus said, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who killed the prophets and stone those who are sent to you, how often have I longed to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wing, and you were not willing. Look, your house is left to you desolate, for I tell you, you will not see me again until you say, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. May the Lord add blessing to the reading of scripture. Jesus says in that famous lament that he longed to bring his people close to him like a mother hen who tucks her chicks under her wing. And it's a beautiful image of Jesus. It's more tender than he is sometimes. And it speaks of the tenderness of God's love and the desire that God has for all of us to find rest in his presence, not just in eternity, but here in the flesh. Where We read that scripture today because it is one of the many times in the Bible in which the writers liken God to a mother in the Psalms and in the Old Testament more prevalent than in the New Testament. There are, in those incidences where God is written as a mother, common themes of comfort and a desire on God's part to protect those who are vulnerable, and sadly, the refusal of the author by those who are, in fact, vulnerable. Those images are what we learned that God desired and still desires for all of his people. We, of course, have at the center of our faith tradition a different image of God, and it reminds us that even on Mother's Day when we talk about the way that God is like a mother, all things are not sweetness and light. The very best things in life come always through the deepest sacrifice. So at the heart of our faith is a picture of God bloodied and isolated and alone, being mocked and rejected and suffering, not in vain, but suffering nonetheless. The suffering servant is what we call Jesus sometimes. And his suffering, we believe, gave birth to the path to forgiveness and to eternal life, not just for the chosen people, but for all people. And as with all creation of new, there is deep sacrifice and a tearing away of the old that is needed for new life to emerge. I don't know why that is the case, but it is the case. Good things, new things, fresh hope and possibilities always require sacrifice, labor, and loss. There is no other way. That's on my mind today because we are celebrating Mother's Day, and, and all I have ever done is witness mothering, but it sure looks like sacrifice, and it absolutely looks hard, and it lasts for a very long season. I, like you, know lots of men in their 50s and 60s who, when they're privileged to still talk to their mom, are admonished to take a an umbrella with them or make sure that they have been eating right. Motherhood never ends, does it? Really. And even when our mothers pass, the things that they most tried to pour into us, they stay with us so that we continue to relate to them. It is customary to celebrate Mother's Day with soft pictures of gentle nurture, and we will today, and to remember times of closeness and sweetness, and we will today. It seems right to do so, but it's also necessary to remember that it's not all sweetness and light. Motherhood, in one way or another, is a massive change in a woman's life from whoever she thought she was and whatever she thought she might be to being the sole source, truly, for the well-being of another human being who cannot really give back. It is an inalterable change. I had never witnessed it until Marilyn's daughter Miley had children, and frankly, I was shocked at what happened in the first two years after she had her first child. The Miley, who I knew, who was a spitfire and going to take on the world and seemed bright enough and strong enough to, to do it, was tired, Miley, with food in her hair. and <laughs> 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 Do 
the incessant ringing of mommy, mommy, mom, 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 mom in her ears. I think it's true to say she was happier with food in her hair and a person to call on her every day. But on any given day, it was rough. I hope on Mother's Day that you have a lot of really great memories of your mother, even if you had a rough time with her now and then or a lot of time. All of us should be able to enjoy at least a handful of memories of sacred sweetness where we remember the center of our life, our mothers at that tender age being there for us. I hope that your memories will be a source of joy and thanksgiving for you today and that you will remember the beauty of your mom and the import she has had in your life. It's good for us when we honor those who have been a part of our lives in that way. We can always bring up the other stuff on another day, but sometimes it's good just to remember the good and the beauty and the sacred. I want to give you a kind of framework for thinking about mom and, and the way we relate to God as God relates to us sometimes in a mothering way. Let's start this way. Studies have shown uh, for a very long time that newborn infants, when they are touched and held a lot, with lots of physical contact and uh, back and forth verbalizations and stroking, they do better both physically and emotionally, well, and intellectually also, than newborns who are isolated circumstantially. Newborns who are isolated fail to thrive. Many, many of them don't make it to even 18 months old, even though there's nothing really physically wrong with them. It's an interesting thing that science so often really drives home the truth of Christianity in uh, crystal clear ways. And, and what is driven home in, in those studies and, and those observations is that human beings were never meant to be all by themselves, not needing anyone else. Just the opposite is true. We really need the touch and the love and the care and the safety of our relationships of other people from the moment we're born until the moment we die. And we really always need an intimate relationship with our God in the same way. It's an interesting and, and intuitive fact that babies who are not touched or cuddled or cared for in that way don't develop much awareness around them and don't really have any reason to go forward. They exist and they are alive, but not in the way that we would all want. Children, in the best of circumstances, are immensely difficult because they're all need, especially when they're first born. They are alive, but they don't really have the ability to intentionally give to their mother or to anyone else who is caretaking. And yet, the oddest thing happens. As a mother cares for the growing child who is up at night who throws up and has to have their diapers changed and all of those really hard duties that are just incessant, the mother feels as if the child has given her something that no one else ever could. It's really a truly beautiful look at the way that we are created. And I would say to you today, beyond the Mother's Day um, talk, that if you're in a bad place, feeling isolated and struggling with the meaning of your life or don't really know how to go forward, likely what you need is either connection that you don't currently have, and that would mean you caring about and for someone else, or you need to be connected with people who love you better, who honor you and are glad to see you. Another way to put that, at least in my experience, is be a part of the church. Right? I've been a part of the church. The church is my mom as much as my mother was, really, all of my life. And, and on any given day, before I was a preacher, they were always happy to see me when I came to church. And then, you know, they, now people wait until they see how the sermon goes. I, I teased. The, the church has always, for me, truly, been my mother. It, it's been home. It's been a place where I have been held accountable and where I have been honored and where I have been supported and where people chose to see the better in me rather than the worse in me. If that's your experience too, that your dynamic of being ministered to by the Spirit and by those who are caught up in the Spirit is something sacred and beautiful, give the gift of life then 
by inviting other people who might be isolated. We are made to be together. And specifically, God designed the church so that we could be together in a unique way at his feet, worshiping him and growing together under his guidance. That is what the church is for. It veers off into politics and it veers off into rules and regulations and judgments. But that's us, messy and dirty like all children. It is not what it was designed for. It was designed for every one of us to connect to our Creator and to one another because both of those are really, really important for our development and our growth and for the joy that God wants us to have. So I'm going to tell you just a couple of stories. Can I get an amen for that for just a couple? Because I know like 50. Okay, well, I'll tell you 47 and we'll see how we're doing then. A couple of stories of motherhood that I have observed. And as I tell them, I'd, I'd like you to, if you would frame in your mind that these, I chose these stories be, because they're, they're kind of fun stories to tell, but they're also pictures of what God has provided us in and through the church, right? They, they are the same thing in a different realm. So the first one happened in Longmont, and um, I, I know it will be weird to hear but in Longmont, I don't, I don't know how they ever did this. They found a way to force me to do visitations. Right? Play to your weaknesses. Is, that's what I say. So I was assigned to do a visitation for a young uh, mother who had begun to attend the church. She had one little guy uh, about four years old, I think. Um, pretty rugged life uh, leading up to her decision to try to, to figure out how to get things straightened out and to return to church. So off I went um, uh, in my introverted self thinking, I bet I can keep this thing to like five minutes out. Knocked on the door. She came and opened it, and uh, what to my wondering eyes did appear but a, a nightmare. <laughs> Remember, I'm a, I'm a male, and, and I was in college, and I lived in a dorm. So when I tell you that the shape of the house shocked me, I'm saying something. It was, a, it was like a, a clothing bomb had gone off. It was crazy, right, where you go, maybe I should come back in a year or something. <laughs> but she had cleared a little path so that I had a place to sit on the sofa. So she said, come on in, Pastor. And I sat on the sofa. And, and here are the things that I, I genuinely remember because it was just, you just go, I don't really know what's coming next. There was a, <clears throat> a bar of soap on the sofa just where if I had put my arm up, I could have grabbed the bar of soap and, and clean, cleaned up a little bit. That's a little dissonant. There was a G.I. Joe who had had a rugged day because his head was no longer attached to his body. The, the body was hanging off the table, and it was a kind of a small apartment. I, I could see the kitchen, and his helmeted head was on the toaster, almost as if the final threat was, right, give me the information. Or uh, <laughs> So I'm not really great I at visitation in general, or making small talk, but I sure tried, right? Uh, I, I, I knew, just ignore all this. You cannot bring it up. You can't say, what happened? No, can't do it. <laughs> Happily, before I could fumble around, uh, the light of her life, her four-year-old, escaped from wherever she had him tied down, and, and he came running into the, the room full of uh, energy. He was dressed just in underwear, uh, but had taken the time at some point, though he didn't have a t top on, t to smear, I hope, jam uh, <laughs> uh, across his uh, chest. Got the picture? <laughs> and I don't think he knew that there was a visitor there because it surprised him enough that he stopped. And when he stopped, I took advantage of the situation and said to him, well, hey, buddy, are you behaving today? <laughs> and he said, looking me straight in the eyes, no, sir. I have been bad all day long. <laughs> and, right? And the evidence all around him spoke uh, to the deep truth that he had witnessed. I, I said some, something, some throwaway thing to him, right? Uh, try to behave or I bet you can do better or whatever. And then mom ushered him back to the room uh, where he would stay until the quick visitation was over. I, I love that picture of that little boy and that really, really 
exhausted mother because I know that at some point the mother made the choice, the house is just going to have to be how it is, I have to take care of him. And she had already at four years old somehow poured into him a deep enough honesty that he was willing to answer the question with the blunt truth. No, sir, I have been bad all day long. It is a picture that resonates the church at its best. The church, instead of being a place of judgment, that says, what? You did that or you thought that or you said that? You hold that belief? That's bad and you can't be a part of us, which is too much the stereotype and too much the truth of the church. The church should always be a place where people learn honesty. My goodness, we all need God to be God. And every one of us has been a mess and needed to be cleaned up time and time again. You'll know we do communion every month. The church should be a place where it's okay to say, you know what, I've come all unraveled and I don't really know what to do. It should, and it is, in its best operation. The church is the family of God, and we make a way for people who have been bad for a very long time to get themselves straightened out and to do better. Second picture. We recently had our three grandkids visit for a, a week. It, it was for the youngest one, Julian, his first stay away from mom and dad overnight, <clears throat> which I didn't think would be a big deal, right? Because um, uh, I'm GRC in, in the family. That stands for Grandfather Reverend Priya. I, uh, being with GRC, I thought it would be a life-changing experience, and, and he wouldn't miss his mother at all. That's not you... Uh, that's not true. No, no, no. He could care less about GRC as the sun went down and it became obvious to him he was going to have to go to bed without mom there to kiss him and to tuck him in. He really unraveled, right? It, it's crazy to me. Really lovely little boy. Just a, a joy to be around. Not really temperamental, not given to fits or whatever. But my God, he melted down. So the, the first night, we tucked the kids in and went back to the bedroom and we hear wailing, like biblical wailing. And... Uh, um, we voted, right? You know, the Creels vote a lot of, of times. I won 10 to 2. Uh, Marilyn had to go see uh, what had happened. It was Julian who knew that his mother was not going to surprise him and come and t tuck him in. So Marilyn was up three or four times that first night, patiently and, and loving. She's amazing. Remember, she's married to me. Second night, same thing, right? We tuck him in and, and we go to bed hope, hoping that uh, he's got to be just exhausted because he didn't sleep the first night. I can tell you this, Marilyn was exhausted. But there is no consoling somebody who is that far away from their mommy for the first time. Really, it, it was just crazy. Making. I, I flashed between, well, I bet I can make it be quiet, which is wrong, <laughs> to the thank God Marilyn has to do this thing, right, which is wrong. Third night, we go into biblical wailing too, right? Uh, he'll grow up to be a fan of the Old Testament uh, lamentations, I, I feel sure. This time we decide, Mike we got to do something. So Marilyn called mom, right, which we had not done because we thought that it would just drive and make it worse. So called mom, put her on speakerphone. Julian's in his, his little bed, right? And, and we've tucked him in, right, like he's in the army, so he can't be. <laughs> and his mom says, how you doing, buddy? And he says, I, I, I just want to be with you. Can I come home? Can I come home? And she said, oh, Julian, honey, no. No, I'm in Portland. You're in California. But let me pray with you. And then she did. She prayed that God would be able to touch Julian so that he wouldn't feel so alone, that he would comfort him, and that he'd be with him. And this will sound weird, but in my family, we never prayed. So, so I, I never grew up with anyone praying uh, over me or, or with me, except for in church, the formal prayers. And Marilyn and I pray for each other, but it's a different dynamic. It just, like wonderfully broke something inside of me to see M Miley have the wherewithal to know, well, it's got to be God that comforts him because I'm not there to kiss him or to hold him. And God did. Julian slept well that night and we had no more problems for the rest of the trip. It, it was one of the most profoundly beautiful things that I've ever had the privilege to see Maybe just because I recognize this is not just Miley being a good mom, and, and she is, right? This is a picture for me of uh, the calling and the desire that I've always had for the church. P 
people come to the church oftentimes in really disconsolate places. And the church at its best doesn't issue advice or commands. The church at its best has the wherewithal to worship in a way that we turn the person over to God who then is able to minister to them and bring them calm, right? It's just a a beautiful picture of, of what God has designed for us as the people of God. It's a privilege to me to have seen that in motherhood, in Miley being a really loving and smart and faithful mommy to to Julian. And it's a privilege for me to have been in the church all the years of my life because it doesn't happen very often, but sometimes it does still, that someone who is completely lost and terrified at their circumstance finally connects with their Heavenly Father, finally gets that spirit infusion and they are calmed and made peaceful, and they are given strength for the journey ahead. I am thankful for my mom and for moms everywhere who have gone through the sacrifice of motherhood and who have cared for their children as best they could, but I am particularly thankful for every mom who ever had the good sense to turn their child's heart to Jesus Christ, knowing He will continue their work forever. Let's be a place in this church where anyone, whatever they have been up to, whatever has been wrong in their life, can find a relationship with Jesus Christ and can enter into that peace and to that acceptance. That would just be a beautiful way to honor our mothers, to honor our God, and to be the church that we're supposed to be. Amen. Will you rise to sing our closing songs? Gentlemen, get ready. We're going to sing one song, and then you're up. change to
Now, how are they going to how are they going to see the screen? Uh, for like a B. Okay, okay. Ar arrange them then. It's yours. Come on.
So you got to. Yeah. You'll see, obviously, the screen opposite you. Or if you've memorized the song, that's good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, 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 I don't think. Nope, nope. I'll, I'll go to the back row where I belong. How bad could it really be, right? Good. We're about to find out, aren't we? So we'll have a beautiful intro in the beginning. And then go all on the floor. That's right. Look. God help us look to Burke. Good. That's right. No, no, no more injuries there. There we go. Good man. Thank you, Roger. Thanks, sir. Thank you, Steve. Did a good job on the lip thing. It's great to have been in worship service with you today. I hope that you real uh, will, uh, in fact. Ask somebody else to worship with us next week. If you would bow your heads now for a closing prayer. Father, we are thankful for 
your love and uh, your care and your creation of the church. We're thankful, too, for our mothers, those who sacrificed for us to raise us and to help us along the way. We ask that you would bless us, that your graceful spirit might be ours as we enter into this week uh, in our families, in our homes, in our places of work, in the places that we visit. Let your light shine through us. It's in the beautiful name of Jesus Christ that we pray. Amen. Have a great week.
Hi, thanks for tuning in today. You're about to see a worship service that I hope will be a blessing to you. If you would like to help support the ministries of the Visalia Methodist Church, you can click on the comment link below and that will take you to a, a giving tab. We hope that the worship service you're about to see and the sermon you're about to hear will be a blessing. 